And uh, I'm, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Apache Zeppelin and how, it, and how it fits to your data pipeline. And please interrupt me any, uh, anytime if you have any questions. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Moon. I'm a creator of Apache Zeppelin. And I'm a co-founder of NF Labs, who donated a project to the Apache Foundation. And uh, before uh, I start, I want to ask a uh, question. Uh, so how many people here uh, heard about Apache Zeppelin? Okay, how many people uh, use Apache Zeppelin? Okay, thank you. So I think it, uh, I can go through a little bit of the history of the project really quickly. Uh, so Zeppelin uh, it wasn't open source from the beginning. So in uh, late year 2012, in my company, we, have, uh, work, we were working on a commercial product called Peloton on top of a, uh, Spark and Shark, that was, I think, it really early days of Spark and Shark. And it was a vertical solution that, uh, vertical solution for data analytics that has a dashboard and user management and data import and interactive analysis. And one of its menu, uh, its feature interactive analysis was the mo most popular uh, feature among our uh, customers. So a year later, we decided to open source uh, that feature that became a Zeppelin project. And it wasn't uh, look like it now. From the beginning, it was much more ugly in the beginning. Uh, but we went through multiple iterations. And uh, uh, year later, another year later, uh, we uh, decided to, oh, sorry, yeah. We decided to uh, donate a uh, Zeppelin project to the Apache Software Foundation. So, uh, end of year 2014, it became a uh, uh, Apache Zeppelin went to went into the Apache incubator, and uh, it's been almost two years since the incubation. So, Zeppelin made uh, became a top level project in this year, and. Uh, in the beginning, Zeppelin uh, had uh, 10 contributors uh, and uh, maybe less than 100 stars on its uh, GitHub repository, but now uh, we have uh, more than 160 contributors from worldwide and we have more than 2,000 stars on our GitHub repository. And uh, please don't forget star after this talk. <laughs> And uh, Zeppelin made six releases, and I, I'm sure Zeppelin is the, uh, one of the most popular projects in uh, Apache Software Foundation. And this is, I think, it, uh, the, some, uh, some idea behind of Zeppelin, what Zeppelin trying to do. So I would say this is a, a general uh, life cycle of your data at your work. So data is being collected and then it's processed or transformed. And then you will analyze your data and the result become a report or result become a data product. That's I think a basic life cycle of your data. And this life cycle you will uh, need to use many different technologies or frameworks, libraries or languages uh, for each step. So you probably uh, we combine at least four or five or six different technologies uh, to build this pipeline. And also uh, different type of users are involved in this pipeline. So not only uh, data engineers, but uh, data scientists or even business users are involved in this pipeline. So uh, what Zeppelin trying to do is uh, Zeppelin wanted to provide a uh, unified environment for analytics for this, all these different type of people to use uh, all these different technology in a uh, single place. And Zeppelin, is, uh, uh, Zeppelin looks like this. And I think it, many of you here uh, uh, use Zeppelin, so uh, already familiar. Uh, so Zeppelin is an uh, interactive web-based notebook that you can uh, use multiple different technology uh, at the same time with a nice visualization. And you can share 
uh, your result directly to the other uh, people. So I think it, although uh, many people here know Zeppelin, but I'm sure uh, here I saw a lot of, a lot of people uh, still don't know Zeppelin. So I wanted to share, uh, I wanted to do the, some quick demo, how Zeppelin looks like and uh, how it works. Yeah, so this is a Can you can you see uh, the uh, text? Okay. This is uh, how Zeppelin looks like, and uh, Zeppelin's one of the uh, major menu. Its primary menu is notebook, and that's where you work. And Zeppelin have a, a configuration menu, and the one of the important menu in the configuration is the interpreter. So interpreter is uh, how Zeppelin uh, integrates with your uh, integrate to your backend systems. For example, Zeppelin have integration with the Apache Spark, have integration with the JDBC data source, have integration with uh, a lot of different tools or languages. So here, uh, this menu is uh, uh, where you set up your uh, backend integration. For example, let's see. Uh, some available in, uh, integrations. So they are the list of available inter, uh, integration. We call it interpreter in Zeppelin. And I can uh, set up multiple uh, configuration in this menu. And then I uh, come to notebook and I can select uh, what kind of uh, interpreter I want to use in this notebook. So once I uh, have a uh, this interpreter setup, then I can use uh, multiple different backend in the same notebook. So let's uh, see this one. Let's run this one. So this one is a uh, shared interpreter, and I'm downloading some data. The data is a uh, earthquake data. So where and when and how strong earthquake has it happened. And then I can uh, list the file I have downloaded with this, again, share interpreter. And uh, by the way, this uh, directive selects the interpreter. So uh, percent sign Spark select Spark interpreter, percent sign SH select share interpreter. And I can uh, load downloaded file using Spark. It takes some time, yeah. And then I can print uh, the contents, what it, uh, the, what, how the file looks like, uh, first 100 lines. And it's got a lot of comments in the beginning, but it looks like some kind of uh, CSV format. So I, uh, I wrote a case class here, uh, and uh, here are some uh, Spark API to parse the data and register uh, the data as a temp table. And if I run this one, then Spark, uh, this code generate, creates a data frame in Spark and register it as a table. And then uh, Zeppelin have a uh, Spark SQL interpreter, so I can uh, directly query it. Okay, and I can make another uh, another type of query. Oops. OK. 
Okay. Uh, once you have, once you made uh, some query, then you will uh, see uh, built-in visualization, some buttons that you can make uh, your output data, uh, convert your output data to nice visualizations. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, can can I can I uh, stop the screen recording because I think it, uh, my my laptop is uh, struggling with it. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I just uh, stopped a screen recording. Um, you so, yeah, now it's, I think it's fine. So, yeah, uh, you can leverage built in visualizations here. And uh, there are some nice pivot functions that you can play around your data. And uh, once you have done, then you can change the uh, notebook to the report format, and it becomes a uh, nice looking report that you can directly share to your uh, coworkers or business people. So that's, I think, a uh, basic uh, primary usage of Zeppelin. So people uh, who can handle the data work in the notebook uh, to collect the data and transform the data. And people who can analyze the data can work in the same notebook to analyze data and visualize the data. And then it can be a uh, report that uh, business people can consume directly. So you don't need any uh, export, import uh, result into the database and uh, import from uh, business uh, BI tool. You can, everyone can work in the same tool at the same time. And I can uh, go to uh, go through some of other examples. So uh, one, one of the good uh, feature of Zeppelin is Zeppelin uh, supports multiple interpreter at the same time. That means you can uh, work with Scala uh, Spark uh, API, but at the same time, you can do uh, Python in the same notebook and exchange the data between Scala and Python. So this is a simple example that I put uh, one string uh, here. This is it, uh, from Scala, and I read that string from Python. And Python prints the uh, a string object from Scala, and of course we can put uh, data from from the Python and read uh, data in Python and read from Scala, and this is uh, one example uh, in the Python side that we have loads this all quake data in a, a from the Scala side, and this code is a Python code that uses uh, Spark uh, MLE and do a clustering. Uh, algorithm uh, on the data on the data that Scala read. So let let me run. Yeah, this yeah. So uh, there are three clusters created, and it's been nicely visualized with the scatter chart. So we can see uh, how we can mix uh, different languages in the same tool, and uh, one of the uh, convenient feature in Zeppelin is uh, uh, we, this is something we call a dynamic form. So any uh, language integration can create a, uh, this dynamically created form. Uh, I'm not sure why this visualization is broken here a little bit. Yeah. So probably if you are engineer or data scientist, you you can definitely understand this simple code. And if you wanted to change the number of cluster on your k-means clustering, you can simply uh, change the number and run this, run this code again. But let's say you are a business user. And if you are a business user, if you are a business user, then you will have no idea what this code does. And it's a pretty scary code for business user. But if you have uh, this uh, form that 
uh, you can change the number input parameters, then even though you are not understanding whole this uh, code, you can simply change the number here and run this uh, machine learning algorithms uh, on your own. So it gives some ability to uh, interact with uh, non-technical people in the notebook very easily. Yeah, I'm not sure why this uh, visualization is keep uh, broken, but uh, let's let's continue. And and uh, you you can see in, uh, there are a couple of built-in visualizations here, but uh, that doesn't mean uh, Zeppelin is limited to those type of visualizations. If you have your own library, visualization library. Uh, like uh, uh, Matplotlib in Python, for example, you can use inside of Zeppelin. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, let me reload uh, the notebook. It doesn't, uh, usually it's not happening, this problem is not happening, but always happening uh, during the talk. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, see uh, how Zeppelin can use it other visualization library like Matplotlib in Python. So this is the same scatter chart, but in uh, Matplotlib in Python, not built-in visualization. So uh, you can see you uh, first load uh, data in Scala and uh, made uh, some transformations or process processing in Scala side and then uh, run some uh, machine learning in Python and visualize it in Python uh, in the same notebook. And this is another uh, example of visualization. Actually, Matplotlib is uh, rendered in a backend side, but if you have a, a front-end side visualization like JavaScript uh, visualization code, then you can put your JavaScript inside of notebook so you can uh, visualize your data. So this, uh, as I said, this is uh, uh, earthquake data. So this dot shows where the earthquake uh, was uh, happened. And again, we can leverage the dynamic form here to change the date uh, range. So let's see, let's, let me put dynamic form here then. Uh, any business user can uh, now simply change the range of uh, the date. Let me see from 1996. And we can see a lot of earthquakes and we, we, can, uh, we can see how the uh, plate looks like in the earth, right? So if I change this one, this notebook to the report type, it becomes a shareable, nice, clean report that uh, any any people can consume. So uh, it's I think it uh, it really shows how uh, simple uh, how how Zeppelin make uh, interaction between engineers and business users simple and easy, right? So let me. Go back to my slide. Question? Okay. So, uh, did you say that you were using Matplotlib or Scala? Uh, or are you saying that you write most people in Scala and then Matplotlib is a good library for uh, or How are you connecting to visualization? Or are you like, writing data and then using some Python code to do the visualization? Okay, the question is uh, how do I use uh, Matplotlib for the data? Uh, I load it from the Scala. For mostly Scala, is it good? For score that you were doing mostly in Scala, and if you want to use a Matplotlib, I thought you were trying to draw a connection between those two. Okay, can, can you repeat the question? Okay, so uh, Matplotlib usually is used for Python, yeah. right? Um, how are you, uh, we don't have a good equivalent for, for, for Scala visualizations, or similar stuff. So are you saying that you, uh, the way that you is you write your Scala code and then you essentially generate some data and then write your 
right? A little bit of Python code to then visualize in Matplotlib, or is there a more native visualizing? Uh, yeah, I think it. Uh, okay, the question is, uh, uh, what is the recommended way to map to live if I'm uh, if I'm using uh, Scala? So one way is uh, uh, like uh, this example, this demo, uh, load data from the Scala and do some processing and pass the results to the Python side using Zeppelin's uh, feature and then uh, read that data from Python and draw a uh, Mathlib visualization. Or uh, I think there is a, a, a project uh, that uh, provides some uh, Scala API for Mathlib. I think it's a, uh, developed one of the people from uh, Netflix, I think. Yeah. yeah, so I think it, there are a couple of options. And I hope that, be, uh, yeah, hope that becomes, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, well integrated with Zeppelin in the future. Okay, uh, let me, uh, is there any other question about the demo? Or let me go back to my slide. So, yeah. Uh, how is data passed from one interpreter to another interpreter? Is it just written to disk and then the next one reads it? Or is there anything better? Okay, the question is how, how can data, how data can be passed from one interpreter to the other interpreter? Uh, so one way is it uh, write data into the disk and read from the other interpreter. Uh, the other way is Zeppelin have a, uh, something called resource pool. Uh, there is a distributed, you can think of it as a distributed map among uh, all the interpreters. So, uh, if your data is uh, small enough to fit it into your memory, then you can uh, put your data into the resource pool, and then the other interpreter process can read it. So. Follow up on that. So in your examples, you seem to be using the same RDD between multiple interpreters. Can you just stuff RDDs into this resource pool, or how are they share? Okay, the question is, yeah, if RDD is uh, shareable, uh, using resource pool, right? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if uh, because of uh, its interpreters are running as a diff uh, separate JVM process, so um, an object uh, need to be serializable to, you know, read read by the other interpreter. So, RDD, I, if we, I think I don't think it's serializable, but if if any object is serializable, then you can read it from the other interpreter. And interpreter, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the interpreter. So interpreter is a, a backend integration, an abstraction layer for the backend in Zeppelin. And in the beginning of the project, we had only uh, three interpreters, uh, which was a Spark and a Markdown and a Shell, I think, uh, in two, two years ago. But now we have more than 20 interpreters. and. Uh, there are even uh, third-party interpreters on uh, GitHub, so there are much more uh, choices of backend integration that you can use. And uh, like I mentioned, the interpreter is basically running as a separate process and communicate with Zeppelin daemon using a Swift uh, message. And there are three different modes that uh, you might in uh, interested because of uh, that's uh, related to how Zeppelin integrates with Spark and Scala. So uh, there are three different modes of interpreter and our first one is a shared mode and shared mode is a one interpreter process and uh, there are interpreter group inside of a process and it, each interpreter group have multiple interpreter uh, instances. And a single process and single interpreter group serves all the notebook. And the second mode is a scoped mode. In this mode, um, still a single process, but uh, multiple interpreter group serves each individual notebook. And uh, the uh, last mode is an isolated one, and which creates uh, individual separate uh, process per notebook. So 
Now, uh, let's see how Spark Interpreter uh, leverages these three different modes. So first, uh, shared mode, Spark Interpreter uh, creates uh, Spark context, and Spark context is being shared by uh, Spark and Spark SQL, PySpark, Spark R interpreter inside. So it, on, although you are using Python, although you are using Scala, you can see the same, uh, you can access the same table you have registered in the Scala context. And your job submitted by Spark or job submitted in uh, PySpark or uh, Spark R or Spark SQL, all they go into a uh, single Spark context. And, uh, and also you have a, a single Scala repo. So that, and this process serves all notebooks. So that means if you define, uh, let's say you define a variable uh, Twitter uh, in notebook A, and in notebook B, you can read that variable and you can uh, update that variable. So sometimes that's expected behavior, but sometimes that's not, a, not expected behavior. So uh, the scoped mode, uh, Spark interpreter uh, runs a little bit differently. So still, uh, there are single Spark context but uh, each notebook will have now uh, their own uh, Scala repo. Uh, so each notebook will have their own namespace for their variable. They are not conflicting each other. They cannot read each other, update each other. But all the jobs submitted from all these notebook and all these interpreter will go to the single Spark context. And the job is scheduled by fair scheduler inside of a uh, Spark context. So that's it, uh, scoped mode. And isolated mode is uh, uh, look like this. So each, each notebook will have their own Spark context and their own Scala repo. So that's a three different modes. And you, uh, it, I think you can choose three different modes depending on your workload or how you want to use. So that's it, how Zeppelin integrates uh, with the Spark and Scala, I think. So any questions so far here? Yeah. OK. Let me go uh, to the other uh, components. So interpreter is uh, one of the components of Zeppelin. And that, uh, like I mentioned uh, before, uh, in the beginning, there were only uh, four interpreters, three interpreters. But uh, as soon as we make it pluggable, uh, community contributed a lot of interpreters. So now it became more than 20. So uh, we expected to, that the same thing happened to the other, other module inside of Zeppelin. So uh, notebook uh, storage is another uh, pluggable component that uh, Zeppelin has. So uh, basically, your notebook is persisted in your local file system. But sometimes you wanted to put your notebook in a shared storage or your own companies, uh, the other storage system that have ability to version control or backup. So Zeppelin uh, made a pluggable layer for the notebook storage. And now uh, we have a Git repository, a Git notebook repo, and S3, and Azure, and Zeppelin Hub as well. And you can also plug in your own repository. It's a uh, the API is really simple, so you can create your own uh, integration in a few hours, I think. And another pluggable module that we are still working on is uh, visualizations. And although uh, Zeppelin, you can use your own library like Mathlib or any, any JavaScript visualization library inside of your notebook, uh, if uh, built, using built-in visualization is actually much simpler because you don't need to write uh, any code. You just need to click the button, right? So we want to have uh, visualizations pluggable. Now it's uh, hard. Uh, the list of visualization built-in is uh, uh, fixed, but we want to have a pluggable layer for it. So eventually we want to see uh, interpreter is pluggable and notebook storage is pluggable and visually make uh, visualization pluggable as well. So it, it's a working in progress. And uh, so uh, pluggable interface or pluggability is one big topic in Zeppelin and that's it. 
uh, how we expect more contribution to the project. And another, good, another big topic of Zeppelin is enterprise features. Uh, we, are, uh, we now see more and more users using uh, use Zeppelin on their uh, production or on their enterprise workload. So uh, I think it, uh, Zeppelin uh, from uh, 0.6, uh, I think uh, Zeppelin now have a, a basic uh, authentications and authorizations. I think it, uh, this authentic authentications and authorization feature, especially this authorization, uh, Prasad here uh, from Twitter contributed it. And um, I think that's it. that shows where Zeppelin goes in the future. So Zeppelin, uh, we wanted to have um, enterprise level features so Zeppelin can just can be used in the enterprise without custom any user buy some enterprise version or commercial version of Zeppelin. So Zeppelin now supports authentications and authorization of notebooks. So you can create a user, you can integrate Zeppelin with your LDAP or Active Directory, and you can let your user, user login. And each, each notebook can be access controlled. And we have more roadmap uh, on uh, enterprise side, actually. So uh, except for authentication and authorization, uh, there can be more uh, enterprise level features, especially multi-user support, like, uh, for example, like uh, impersonation, is it uh, we are working in progress. And we are also working something called uh, personalized mode, uh, which is it, uh, each individual Zeppelin uh, note. If you uh, have used Zeppelin, then one of the cool features of Zeppelin is uh, what you see uh, is uh, what others see uh, in their browser. If you change the type of, uh, type of graph, then the other, other people in the other browser session immediately see real-time changes. Sometimes that's cool, but sometimes that's not what you want. You want to provide uh, personalized selection. I want to see the uh, data with pie charts. The other people want to see the same data with uh, the other type of chart and even with different uh, parameters. Uh, some I want to see from year 2010 uh, to 2015, the other people want to see at the same time in different range. So uh, we are uh, currently working on it. And also a lot of people ask uh, how can, how Zeppelin Note can be included in a uh, production uh, pipeline. So uh, once a uh, user made some notebook in Zeppelin, they wanted to include that code in the production pipeline. So uh, we are trying to make some progress on that side. So job management is uh, uh, hopefully we can do uh, some useful feature. We can provide some useful feature for uh, that use case. Uh, for example, event hook can be one of that feature. Uh, so you can integrate Zeppelin with uh, uh, your production pipeline. And another one is a uh, uh, table data processing engine. So uh, as you see, uh, Zeppelin uh, automatically uh, sh uh, shows built-in visualization uh, if your output is a table data. So uh, we Oh, we wanted to improve that a little bit more. So we eventually, that's it. Uh, I think a kind of a little bit long-term goal, but we wanted to improve uh, this table data support. So uh, want, we want to make Zeppelin uh, not only for uh, data engineers or scientists, but business, we want to business users do more job on data with their uh, mouse click, not using uh, code. So that's it, I think, what table data processing engine pro will provide in the future. And of course, we wanted to have a better support for uh, Python and R. I think it, uh, Zeppelin's uh, Scala support is uh, really, I think it's not bad, really good. So, uh, but uh, Python and R support, which is also popular among uh, data scientists, which is, I think it's a little bit behind. So we are uh, really working on it. And 
uh, Zeppelin is written uh, the front end side of Zeppelin is written in Angular based on Angular one, and uh, as you all know, Angular one is a uh, you know end of its life. So we wanted to uh, improve our uh, UI as well uh, UX as well uh, in the future, and uh, the one of the the best thing of Zeppelin is uh, Zeppelin is open source project. So this is actually my own agenda, and you can you you can add yours, and you can uh, participate uh, the community. So this is the users and contributors and uh, companies who do business with Zepp uh, using Zeppelin and some technology integrations. So Zeppelin uh, have a lot of users and contributors like Twitter. And even uh, a lot of different companies are uh, company have Zeppelin in their products. For example, Amazon have a e uh, Zeppelin on their EMR, and Google provides a uh, script for their cloud data, uh, data pro, and uh, Microsoft Azure have a Zeppelin notebook inside. So Zeppelin is already being adopted in uh, many commercial products, and there are a lot of users and technology integrations. So. Uh, please, uh, this is uh, open source, and you can uh, you can participate. So please join the community. And yeah, I think it, that's it. So uh, thank you for listening. And if you have uh, any more question, uh, please. Uh. Can you speak to your R integration? What are there's you said it's not as strong as some of the other languages. What are uh, some of the challenges? Uh, so the, is, is a question, uh, challenges around R, in, R interpreter? Uh, yeah, so actually Zeppelin uh, at the moment have two different R interpreter implementation. One is uh, inside of a Spark interpreter source tree, the other is on uh, separate as a completely separate uh, uh, implementation, but they are basically they are doing the same. There are some history, but uh, I, I mean uh, there are two duplicated implementation for uh, Spark R. So uh, I want to uh, change this one uh, to uh, look like uh, uh, Python case. For example, Python also Zeppelin have a two different Python interpreter implementation. One is Spark uh, PySpark which is in integrated, uh, fully integrated with Spark. The other is a pure Python interpreter, which works without Spark. But so um, I want to, in the future, I want to see uh, these two R interpreter integration, one become a Spark R, and the other become a pure R interpreter. So right now, you don't have a pure R interpreter? Yeah, we don't have. Is there a time frame on that? Is that like a, a year or a few months? Or? Uh, I cannot uh, really say the time frame uh, here, but I, I would say uh, if there are more user demands, then more contributors in the community will uh, spend time on it. So if you have a, a question or uh, your re requirement or request, then you can create a Jira issue, you can write an email in the mailing list, and contributor will see and change the directions, I think. <laughs>